Hey everyone, how are you? Are you finding a way to keep cool these hot summer days? It's uh, three digits here in Kansas. <laughs> uh, my name is Bess McCarty, founder and coach with the MLM Millionaire Club School for Network Marketers, making network marketing simple. We teach skills and mindset and role play and practice and drill and train it with us. Today, I am coming to you as the shrink of MLM to teach a self-coach method that I've developed about 20 years ago called Real Conversations. And I use it just about every day of my life, sometimes several times a day. And it's something anyone can learn real fast and you can use it for yourself, your team, your loved ones. So I'm um, glad to share this with you. And hello Margie, so good to see you, and Charlie and Lauren. Welcome you guys. If you'd like to say where you're from, then I can give you a shout out. And uh, hi, Charlie. <laughs> Thank you for the likes, the thumbs up, and the hearts. <laughs> uh, love to welcome you where, wherever you are, if you'd like to, to say that. And also, if you know someone who would like to learn how to self-coach, how to coach themselves and others, uh, and a very, very simple four-step method, uh, be sure and share, because sharing is caring. And we love to. I'd love to get this method out to people. I'll have some free um, um, things that uh, you can you can use for yourself. So, uh, Lauren from Columbia, welcome, and Eric Bach, thank you. Welcome everybody. So glad you're here. Okay, so how to coach ourselves? A lot of times we run into problems that might be um, physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual. Well, this method covers all of those. And it's a very simple four-step method. You might want to get your pen and paper out and write this down. Very simple four steps. How you can move from problem to solution in just minutes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> this helps me every day in the last 20 years since, since I've evolved it. Um, I discovered what I, what, how I discovered it was um, I noticed that my own solving of my own problems and my clients as a body mind therapist and counselor and of my students seem to go through these similar four steps so I wrote them down and I thought wow this is do this is teachable these these four steps you know I follow these and I could I, I could teach these so here's the four steps if you if you want to write them down or jot them down um, they are that we uh, recognize or identify the problem or challenge that we're going through so if it's a, a physical challenge, an emotional one, a, um, a mental one, don't know how to do something, or even a spiritual one. It could be connected with behavior, it could be connected with feelings, or your progress or success in your company. Since this, I do speak to network marketers, this is my niche. Um, I coach um, people to better health relationships and careers, and my niche is network marketers. And of course, that includes the mindset, and includes the business, and includes the life. It all it all plays back and forth. As you know, uh, network marketers are huge on personal growth, and that's one reason I love working with you and I admire you so much for facing yourself every day. So, how to coach when you run into a block? Um, the four steps are: first of all, we identify the problem or challenge. Secondly, we identify the emotion that's under that because that can give us a clue to the next step, which is the need. Welcome, Steve. And the fourth step is the solution. So I'll explain those a little bit. The problem could be any that I mentioned, but let's say in network marketing, um, it could be a, a fear of making the calls, procrastination. Procrastination might be the behavior, not making the calls. And then under that, we identify the emotion, because that helps us. Yeah, is it you know anxiousness? Is it frustration? Is it fear of rejection? Is it um, um, unknown even? So, but but we try to identify the emotion underneath it because that can give us a clue for the next step, which is the need. Now, the needs are what we all have. We're all born with being human, just like a plant needs sun, water, soil, air, minerals. To, to live and grow. We all have basic needs too, and they can be mental, emotional, spiritual, physical needs. And as a good caretaker to ourself, 
it is good to refresh ourselves on these needs and make sure they're all met for a happy, optimal life. Abraham Maslow, uh, Maslow has a chart of needs. I have studied needs for 20 years and put together all of them that I have found, plus my own that I have researched and found, into a chart which I can send you guys. I'll hold it up here and I will, I will post this chart after the video is done. Let's see, it looks like this. And so you can see the four steps goes from the problem to the emotion to the um, need and then to the solution. So those are the four steps you can walk yourself through always. And so we'll use this example of procrastination of not making calls. Uh, thank you, Charlie. She says fabulous. <laughs> Uh, it's very doable, very doable for everyone. So let's say procrastination, uh, not making the calls. Um, the feeling under that could be many of them, but let's say in this distributor's case, it might be um, fear of rejection. And so the need, what would the need under that feeling be? Well, a lot of times the need helps us to cue into the I'm sorry, the feeling helps us cue into the need, right? So what could be the, the basic human need underneath that? And I will read you some of the, the needs. Uh, for physical, it could be air, water, food, rest, shelter, exercise, nature being in nature. For emotion, it could be love, affection, warmth, compassion, assurance, support, etc. For mental, it could be attention, acknowledgement. It could be um, the competence. Uh, recognition, acceptance. For spiritual, it could be divine love, guidance, being, beauty, harmony, inspiration. There's a lot more. But what do you think could be the need underneath a fear of rejection? I think that one of the needs it could be would be self-esteem. That would help make a person immune to the rejection, to whether the person said yes or no. If we didn't take it personally right, and if our self-esteem was so healthy and that it could remain intact no matter what happens in our business, then I believe the fear of rejection would go away. And so would the procrastination and the calls would be made. Now, how do we solve that? The four, remember the, the, the four steps are we identify the challenge underneath that, the emotion underneath that, third step is the need, and then the fourth step is the solution. The solution is how we meet the need. So how do you meet the need for self-esteem? How do you create that? How do you give yourself that? Well, there could be a few ways, and it is individual with each person, but here's a few basic ways. You can um, go to those who value you and ask, what are the good parts of me? What do you like or love about me? You know, and your mate's a good one to ask that, right? <laughs> um, because they often will see things in you that you don't. So you can have more self-esteem or appreciation or value of yourself by asking other people. You can also, here's another exercise that I really like. Welcome, Sharon. To gain self-esteem, another exercise or solution exercise is to look in the mirror every day, or especially before making calls, and say, I am valuable and lovable whether people say yes or no. That is a given, regardless of the response that I get today. I am valuable and lovable. And so you can say that in the mirror, and most likely, when you go to make your calls, you will feel stronger. My value and my worth are separate from other people's opinions or responses to me. Therefore, I am most more, like, uh, more likely to not take it personally and realize that this is about them, not me. Get my attention off me and put it on them and on service and what they're needing. Remember, they, they're always saying no to, their, to this opportunity or to their possible next step along the direction that you have. They're not saying no to you. So that could help a fear of rejection. Now, what if... Um, the procrastination was because the person felt anxious and when we dig a little deeper which you can do with journaling you might the person might find out 
that the need under that is confidence. And how can you get more confidence? One way is to get the skills up. And so the need in this case might be for skills and the solution could be read Eric Worre's GoPro book, um, be in Bess's School for Network Marketers where we role play and practice with all of these uh, till we get it. <laughs> Uh, we get all the skills up to a 10, plus the mindset. We clear the mindset. So those are the two components for success, right? So um, going and getting these skills, going and arranging these, reading a book, practicing with your mentors and upline, practicing with your team are ways to solve that problem of how to get the skill. And then the procrastination goes away, because if you know what to say and you know how to handle the objections, no problem, right? You might look forward to doing the calls, so more calls happen then. So this is how you can coach yourself when you feel stuck and how you can coach your team. And feel free to share this chart with them too that I'm about to, to share with you. And hi, Marilyn. Wow. Now, um, it sounds simple, right? Just a four-step method. But sometimes people get stuck on those, and that's where they'll just private message me if you get stuck and I'll uh, uh, give some suggestions. Of course, I do private coaching too, as someone would like an actual session. can usually get you out of being stuck in minutes. I'm not kidding, this, this stuff really works. Hi Pam, welcome. So I will post a chart that you can share with them, and I will also post a, a free lesson that you can get. Um, hi Pam. <laughs> Yeah, you can get this lesson. It is a radio interview uh, with me about Real Conversations process and how anyone can learn it and do it. And it also contains five email lessons that help you to walk yourself through journaling it. So I'll post the link for that too so you can get these and uh, learn this for yourself. So why, why is it so simple? <laughs> Why doesn't everybody know how to do this? Uh, I actually am trying to spread the word about this. Um, one of my clients said that it took him, we just did this process with him. In one session, he said he got further along with his problem than three years of psychotherapy did in one session. Because needs are core. I believe that needs are a divine given gift for us to learn about ourselves. And it is an act of self-love when we identify and meet our needs. Then we shoot forward past the blocks that were there. I believe that every block is simply an unmet need. And every problem is just an unmet need. And all we need to do is identify the need under that and meet it, and the problem disappears. Even serious problems like addictions and uh, be in a procrastination or whatever that that we might have in our life it's all solved with this method very easily very effectively for 20 years now i've been using this as a body mind therapist and a coach so um, very important i recommend printing off this chart putting it on your refrigerator using it uh, uh, do the self four-step method when you feel blocked anywhere in your business. Walk yourself through it. Journal yourself through it. Does anyone have any questions about this? I do teach a whole course on it. There's a book coming out on it eventually <laughs> uh, when I can carve out the time to finish the book, but it's been, I have all the notes. Um, very good process. I call it Real Conversations with Ourselves to know ourselves enough, to know what the block is, our feelings about that, and our need, which can often be hidden. Uh, sometimes we need to be a bit of a detective and search, because if the need were always known, it would be easy to meet it, right? But sometimes it gets buried. And why does it get buried? Because a lot of times in childhood and in our society, we are raised to not know our needs. We tell our kids, oh, you're not hurt, don't cry. You're not hungry, you're not angry, or don't be angry. Rather than acknowledge the anger and say, you know, here's something to punch at. Here, punch your bag, punch your, punch your bed. 
I used to give my son big old boxes to rip up, you know, cardboard boxes, rip up, and he'd throw them all around the room, you know. I did not punish him for being angry. I gave him an outlet for that anger. That anger is speaking of, about a need, and then we find out what he needs behind that. Why was he angry? What was that need? What was that emotion speaking about? What need was that emotion about? And there's always something underneath the anger, isn't there? Or any emotion, or any um, problem that we have. There's an unmet need behind there. So we learn what that is and meet it, and the problem disappears. It can be very fast. Like my client who went to psychotherapy for three years and then got more out of one session with this than the three years because it zeroes in on the cause, which is an unmet need. That's simple. Yeah, let's spread the word. <laughs> so, um, Charlie, looking forward to the book. Thank you for your generous gifts. Meanwhile, be uh, before the book comes out, uh, these lessons that I will post where you can, you can get these for free. It's the most important thing that I teach. That is why I make it free, because it's very, very valuable in our lives to be able to know ourselves and navigate through life, right? And I believe the best way to do that is to know and meet our needs, to be able to identify them. So I read some of them from the chart here, and a little bit I'll post that chart for you, and where you can uh, get the free lessons and learn more. So um, I do have, um, uh, real, the, what I'm posting for you is Real Conversations for everyone. Uh, there is Real Conversations for Network Marketers, which I teach in the MLM Millionaire Club, my school for Network Marketers. So um, the students in there get a big healthy dose of that, and we're coming up with that very soon. In the school, first we take each one of the seven skills identified by Eric Warren in his GoPro book. Every month we take one of the skills and master, one, master that skill. We spend a month with each one. And then the rest of the year, we focus on mindset and clearing the blocks using my Real Conversations method. So success is 80% mindset, 20% skills. Absolutely need both, and we care for both of those in the school. Um, now for people not in the school, I have a workshop about the skills of inviting people and also handling objections. It's called Always Get a Yes when inviting people to look at your business or product. And it's how to develop that rapport and relationship with them first. Some of you've heard before, but some of it is new. I have a secret ingredient in there I call empathy. And I teach how to use this and give this plenty before you offer the solution. It is an art. And um, I have workshops for you to attend on using this and also a video and a, a short book on this that I wrote. So I'm happy to get that to you. Uh, right now the workshops are just being offered for your teams. So I will post the link to that if you think that you would like information about how you could have a free 30-minute workshop for your team on Always Get a Yes. So I'll post that link too. Um, any other questions or comments? Because this is a place where you can do that about the topic of today or about any question that you might have about your business or your life. So I'll just wait a minute and see if anyone wants to post a question or comment. I appreciate you all for being here. Pam and Sharon and Charlie and Margie and Eric. So any going, going, gone, any last comments, questions? Well, if you have one after I close, then go ahead and put it in the comments or private message me. And one person says, I always struggled with self-esteem. Where do you start? Well, my method is to value myself and write down, and by the way, you're not alone. The person who left this message, you're not alone. Everyone does, I think, to some degree, right? Because when we were kids, we were um, um, criticized, not for what we did, but for who we were. And we might have heard, you are bad. You are a bad child or bad kid or daughter, or, which is not, which is not true, right? It's the behavior that's bad. How could a person ever be bad? But of course, the behavior can be. And when parents forget 
to address the behavior rather than the child, then the child starts identifying with being bad or not liked or losing the parent's love because they were not perfect. They got mud on the floor. And so rather than say to the child, um, I do not like the, your muddy shoes, wearing your muddy shoes in the house, they might say, are you crazy? What's wrong with you? You know, that's, that's dumb. And so the child starts to believe this about himself or herself. So we want to be careful when we talk to ourselves or others or our children or family to address the behavior. I do not like that behavior. Um, that, is, that is the wrong thing to do, to hit your brother. Rather than, you know, hit the child and say, you're, you're bad, you're stupid, you're crazy, what's wrong with you? Stop that. Um, to teach about the behavior. So when we are told that we are bad or dumb or crazy or stupid, we believe it. We're little. We don't have the defenses yet to say, oh, that's not true. That's, that's mom or dad just, uh, you know, saying something that's not true. No, we're little and we believe it. These are people who take care of us and give us food and shelter and keep us alive. And they're like God to us. And we believe that stuff. So it goes inside us. And that's where low self-esteem comes from. How to combat that is to, mm, when you don't make your calls, do not beat yourself up for it. Like, why can't I, you know, why am I not farther along in my network marketing business like so-and-so is? They started after me and now they're farther ahead than me. It must be something innately inadequate in me. It must be something innately bad or broken in me. So um, I'll probably never be able to do it. That's not true. We are each, we each have the creative abilities to succeed. So I recommend that you write down the things that you value about yourself, your gifts that you value. But don't forget the biggest gift of all. You don't have to earn love. Just because you exist, just because the Creator made you, you are made of divine love. And that is enough. Some people call it soul. You are that thing. You are that. And that can't be bad. That's got to be made of pure love. So if you understand this about yourself, aside from all your personality traits or what you do for other people or all that, aside from all that, just because you exist, just because you were made by the Creator, you can value that about yourself and others. And of course, valuing others is also how we treat ourselves, right? That's why I recommend that exercise, look in the mirror and say to yourself, I am valuable and lovable no matter what people say to me today. Whether they say yes or no to me today, it's more about them than me. And I can, I can let my self-esteem be intact and my worth and my value. And I got some hearts about that. Does that answer your question? Does that help? Where do you start? Now you can ask other people what they value about you, and then you might value yourself even more. I had someone say, well, I'm a very, you know, I'm one of the most giving people that they know. Well, that could be a reflection of that person too, or else how could they recognize it in others? So, um, you're welcome. I'm glad it, that was a good answer for you. It's loving ourselves, isn't it? Loving who we truly are deep inside. We're each a light. We're each, mm, I call it a spark of the divine. And this exists in even the worst criminal. Right? The behavior is bad, but the person is never bad. Once we can uncover that, we can value just about anybody, even the worst criminal, and understand what happened to them that, that they uh, committed that crime. So let's talk with ourself in a better way, with love and esteem and value. And of course, you're going to then can only value others uh, to the degree that we value ourselves, right? So it starts here. 
then love your customers, your prospects, your team. That's how to make them successful. Just love them. And that's what a lot of the top leaders are saying now, too. Now it's no longer, I was kind of scared to use that word for years. Uh, now it's, I'm finding that people are using it all over the place. Love your team. It's okay to say that, and it's okay to do it. And it starts with us, right? So self-esteem. If you heard that you were bad when you were a kid, that's a parent who mm, is struggling to love themselves. They were probably told that as a kid too. And it's easy to pass that on. And it's easy to carry that along with us. We hear a critical voice as a parent. Okay, now we're big and that parent is not with us or living with us anymore. But we carry that inner critic of a parent with us until we fire it <laughs> and say, I don't, I, I no longer need to listen to you. I'm not going to carry that with me anymore. And then cultivate the other. You can make a tape and tell yourself um, how beautiful and wonderful you are just because you exist, just because you were made by the divine. You can put it in your voice and play it and listen to it. So there's a lot of solutions for the unmet need. And I've just given you a few of them today. And um, Kenya says, hello, thank you for this Facebook Live. I'm MLM. I love the company I represent, but struggle with approaching a total stranger cold market for the first time. What should I have in mind or should, let's see if I can read more about that. Or should I approach the situation? Great. Okay, so struggle with approaching a stranger. Well, two things. Um, Kenya, thank you for asking. Um, I, <laughs> you may have heard me say, I was extremely shy as a child. I was so shy that I would hide out in my room when company would come to our house to visit. And I would stay there. <laughs> And then I grow up and I become a teacher. I get into network marketing about age 20 and I'm going door to door in my neighborhood selling these vitamins, minerals, and herbs that I believe in so much. They helped me a lot. I believed in the mission of them and the way that I got over my shyness approaching total strangers, including going door to door, was service. So that's my first tip. When you think of the people that you are going to help and you are going to serve and you focus on this more than yourself because when I struggle with my shyness that's focusing on me right and I read in Seventeen magazine when I was a teenager that it said if you're shy around a boy you know you're at a dance or talking to a boy and you feel shy focus on him because when we're shy we're focusing on ourselves, right that's a selfish thing and so to get over that shyness, focus on service. Focus on the, the good that you can do by sharing your product or service or your company with others. How you can help others. And commit to be of service today when you go out. And keep focusing on the people that you have helped in the past and what they've said and the difference it's made in their life or that you've heard on your company calls or conventions. If you don't have stories of your own, Focus on the people that have gotten better. Their lives have improved with, your product, with that product or service. And think of the, li of the people that will miss out if you don't offer to them. Okay, that's my first suggestion is an attitude of service. Second suggestion, Kenya, is skill. And that is exactly what I teach in my Always Get a Yes workshop and book and, and video which I'll post the link to that. So how do you think I can teach people to always get a yes, even cold market? It's developing the relationship. You don't offer the solution until you have that rapport with the person. So once you have that and the methods that I described, you will always get a yes back. You don't have to worry about rejection or intruding or being unwanted because you do it properly. You ask the right questions, you listen, and then you give empathy for the problems that they express that you know that you can solve with your business product or service. And once you do that and develop the empathy properly, 
they only then do you offer the solution. Only then will they be hungry for the solution. And this works with cold market or warm or anybody. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Number one, an attitude of service, and number two, get the skills. And I will post a link for you to do that. Um, actually, let's see. I will private message you how you can um, get the, the video. Anyone else like this, the video on, on this process, how to do this? Um, private message me and I will um, get you that video. And hello, Mike. Kenya, did that answer your question adequately for today? Hi, Keith. Welcome. <laughs> We're talking about a self-coach method called Real Conversations today. And we've gone through that, so I'm going to post the, um, the link where you can learn more about that. And right now we're talking about sort of a combination of that and skills. How do you approach people cold market? Everybody struggles with that. And Kenya said, thank you so much. So I'm hoping that that helps. And the links that I post will help you more. Um, so don't worry, everybody. If you uh, don't know how to approach people and you have are struggling with self-esteem, so are nearly all network marketers and all the top earners have been through this. So if you are struggling with it and facing that right now and overcoming that, whether it's quick or, or slow, you are on track because you're facing yourself. So I wanna acknowledge you for doing the growth, for facing yourself, for coming here on this Facebook Live, for putting a message in, for saying, I want to get better at this, I want to overcome this. I wanna acknowledge you for doing that because that means you're on track to success as long as you keep going, keep facing it, keep asking the questions. And um, hello, Femi, welcome. <laughs> now, you can learn this, all this stuff yourself, and it will take years <laughs> to work through this, you know, trial and error method, and uh, some pain and skin knees on the way. Um, or you can look to mentors and learn what they do and learn from them. And I hope that I'm one of your mentors because I love to shortcut your learning to success. I've been through this. I've been a full-time network marketer for years. I'm dedicated solely to coaching right now. I'm not in a company, not in a not network marketing company, nor will I be because I am dedicated to doing a good job. So I will um, uh, continue to coach and teach and uh, help people in my school. And... Um, uh, Mike, yes, I hope you enjoy the hearing about this later when you hear the, the replay. Um, glad you're here. Are there any other questions around self-coaching, overcoming obstacles or blocks, or how to, and talk, how to talk to people, how to always get a yes, how I do that, how I teach people to do that? And by the way, it works. <laughs> was just on a practice session Sunday with one of the participants from the workshop, the Always Get a Yes workshop, and, and she was just very happy, just delighted, because she said, I am better at, I'm getting good at listening and being you know, empathic. And uh, I know what to say to people now. After I listen, I know what to say to them. There's this, this guide in my head. That it, so it's, it's made it doable for her. That's exactly what I wanted to do. And I'd love to do that for anybody ready to learn how to Always Get a Yes. So I'll post all these good links for you. Any other questions, comments? Love to hear your wisdom I can share with the group. Here to answer questions about this or anything about network marketing that you want to ask. But yeah, the big one is, is how to talk to people, right? Two top questions, network marketers, where to find people to talk to and what to say to them. So I cover this, these in the workshops. They're free, they're for your team. Uh, $500 value uh, free for, for when you organize one for your team. Now, if you don't have a team, you can take this link to your upline and say, can you organize a workshop so I can be included in it? Or if you have a little team, that would be included in your upline's organization. Um, there's been some stir on the internet recently about people being afraid of generic trainers in network marketing. Um, because if you're in an MLM company, 
you know, people could be attracted to the trainer and join them. So just wanted to say here for the record, I'm not in a company. I was full-time for years. I know how to do it. I know how to teach you how to do it. Um, but I'm not going to be in a company now or in the future um, because, mostly because I want to do a good job at what I'm doing. I don't want to divide myself and split myself. Um, but second, to make it safe for you. To make it safe for you to bring your team. Because I totally support you and your companies and your sponsors' policies. This is all compatible with what you're already doing, and it's all fundamental basics. No weird stuff. So, um, hope I can help. That's what I'm here for. Okay, everybody, gonna sign off if that's um, everything for today, and let the people see the replay. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. See you next Tuesday, 2 p.m. Central Time.